Hello everyone, in the present video I am going to give you an idea about incentive spirometry. Now I am going to discuss what is incentive spirometry, what is its physiological basis, technique how to use, how to calculate patients inspired volume, what is the effectiveness of incentive spirometry, how to monitor the patients using the incentive spirometry and the complications. Now incentive spirometer device it encourages the patients through the visual feedback that means patient can see how they are performing the performance of SMI that is called sustained maximal inspiration. Now this visual input or the biofeedback that encourages the patient to use this particular instrument and work towards increasing their maximum inspiratory effort. Now let us have a look at this uh, incentive spirometer device image. You can see this device with the three balls and one ball and many more varieties available commercially. For example, you can see different images and cartoon characters on incentive spirometer device used for the kids. Now this device can be purchased very easily from the medicine shop or online and starting cost is approximately around 300 rupees. Now in this image you can see the incentive spirometer device where you can see a mouthpiece, you can see mouthpiece retainer and inspiration flow selector. Now let us see the physiological basis for the incentive spirometer. The basic maneuver of incentive spirometer is sustained maximal inspiration. That is also called SMI. SMI is a slow deep ins uh, inhalation from the FRC functional residual capacity up to the TLC that is your total lung capacity followed by 5 to 10 seconds of breath hold which is very important. SMI is functionally equivalent to performing an inspiratory capacity maneuver followed by a breath hold. So during deep breathing the pleural pressure will be more negative. So the amount of air moving into the lung will be more than that of normal tidal volume which is 500 ml per 500 ml. So greater the negative pleural pressure greater will be the magnitude of alveolar expansion. Now let's see the technique. The patient should be given a comfortable upright position. Select the appropriate flow or volume. Spirometer should be kept at a level of a mouth. Avoid using accessory muscles of inspiration to raise the ball. Then at the end of the SMI instruct the patient to hold the ball in the same position for at least 3 to 5 seconds. Now frequency how to decide. So it varies as per the need but at least 10 to 15 repetitions 3 to 4 times per day it can be given. Now let us try to understand how to calculate patients inspired volume. So to calculate patients inspired volume multiply the patient's inspiratory time in seconds by the inspiratory flow setting in cc per second. Now let us understand with the help of example. If the patient is inspired a slow deep breath at a flow setting of say 200 cc per second for 5 seconds. So inspiratory time into flow settings is equal to inspiratory volume. So 5 seconds into 200 cc per second is equal to 1000 cc or 1 liter. Now let us try to understand the effectiveness of incentive spirometer. There are 3 to 4 very good use of incentive spirometer device. It is said to improve the collateral ventilation because of alveolar interdependence via pores of corn and Lambert's canal or the Lambert's channel and pores of corn yeah, and even uh, channels of Martin. Now what it basically do, it lengthens the period of time during which the inspired oxygen is held within the alveoli. It results in slightly longer time for oxygen uptake by the pulmonary circulation. Now you can see in this image, okay, collateral ventilation channel which includes channels of Martin that is your interbronchial channel, channels of Lambert, bronchoalveolar channel and pores of corn that is your interalveolar channel. Now to prevent atelectasis, 
or uh, to replenish the surfactant which is lost in the presence of atelectasis it can be achieved by expanding the alveoli and stretching the tight to pneumocytes with deep breathing exercise now the surfactant's basic role is to reduce the surface tension thereby helps to prevent the atelectasis now this device helps to increase the strength and endurance of inspiratory muscles now let us see how to monitor the patient receiving the incentive spirometer so do observation of the patient's performance and use and do observation of frequency of session volume or flow goal is achieved breath hold is maintained and efforts and motivation do periodic observation of patient compliance with the additional instruction as needed see whether device is within the reach of the patient and the patient is encouraged to perform independently and see whether uh, new and increasing inspiratory volumes established each day or not now let us see the last part that is complications of incentive spirometer hyperventilation and respiratory alkalosis uh, discomfort secondary to inadequate pain control fatigue pulmonary barotrauma that means your emphysematous lung next exacerbation of bronchospasm now try to understand the important points to remember about the incentive spirometer is successful incentive spirometry is required effective patient teaching very very important tell teach and train these three very important points you have to remember about the incentive spirometer physiotherapist should set an initial goal that is attainable but requires some moderate effort and patient should be instructed to inspire slowly and deeply to maximize the distribution of ventilation and uh, physiotherapist should observe that the patient is using the correct technique and later on minimal or no supervision will be needed and records of progress should be maintained throughout the course of the treatment and the result of this assessment can guide the physician and the physiotherapist in revising the respiratory care plan and and or terminating the treatment once the goals are achieved so incentive spirometer is a device which we use very commonly for pre and post operative uh, pulmonary and cardiac surgery and this device will be very helpful uh, for the patient especially as far as the post operative respiratory care is concerned so i hope you will like this video thank you very much for watching the video thank you